Welcome to Haxby Shed. This time you find me in the middle of a project because I'm making a new table nut for this Harrison milling machine. And when I look at this nut, it's got a 48 tooth spline on it. Now I can't make that without a dividing head and I didn't have one, but I have now because about two weeks ago, Vivor approached me and said, would I be interested in reviewing any of their products? So I had a look at the catalogue and there were three dividing heads on there and I chose one. So that's what we're going to look at today. Now I'd been thinking about buying one of their dividing heads for a while, but there wasn't quite enough information on their website to, to really kind of make me buy. So hopefully if you're thinking about one, what I'm going to show you now might or might not encourage you because my review will be fair so, let's have a look. I'm not sure it would have focused when I was holding that nut up, so let's have another look. Uh, it's 32 millimeters across here. There's 48 splines. The splines go into this holder here. It's a three quarter lead screw, that's 19 mil, with a five millimeter pitch. And this one's quite worn, and that's what's giving me my backlash. So, Using the dividing head, I need to cut these splines. It's going to be a bit tricky on this machine, but that's a different story. There'll be in a different video. <laughs> Let's have a look at the dividing head though. So as you can see, I've not opened this yet. This is exactly how it comes. Um, it's heavy. So as I said, I'm sure I said, there are three models and you can see the weights here. So I've ordered the five inch BS0 dividing head. I looked at the six inch dividing head, but it's a lot heavier. It's about 35 kilos, that one. This one's 27. And I thought it would be just too big for my machine. So this is the one I've gone for. I think the four inch and the five inch share the same body, but with a different size chuck. Now, I placed the order on a Thursday lunchtime and it arrived the next day in the evening. And almost at the moment that I pressed the order, the DPD courier delivery schedule notice came through. Um, so it's clear that everything's kind of automated behind the scenes. And it arrived when it should, uh, and the guy was pleasant enough. Just the regular courier DPD. Now I may have to put this on the floor in a moment because it might just be too heavy to take out on this stand. Well, the first thing I notice is that it comes with a test report here. Six tests dated 18th of April, 2022. So it's been around a while. Let's zoom in. So run out of center, run out of spindle nose, run out of spindle nose taper, axial movement, radial run out of, more to say, and dividing accuracy of worm drive maximum cumulative spacing error. Hmm, that's kind of reassuring, isn't it? And then there's a manual here, which we'll look at in a minute. Well, this manual seems to be the same as the PDF that you get if you look at the product and click the description link. Um, and this manual covers several models, so you can see the gears on here, which you don't get with this one. Uh, this is for the differential dividing head with the gear sets. Uh, there's tables in the back gearing tables, but again, I think they're for the differential model. But we'll find out as we go through. So in the lid, we've got the chuck key, which is quite a hefty one actually. The three outside jaws for the chuck. Um, this is a collar that goes over the threaded spindle, so it's a threaded back plate. A driving dog, this is aluminium. Some hold down blocks by the look of it various screws and an Allen key. Okay. Tail stock. Dividing head. It's a bit difficult to lift this out because it's so heavy. Oh, blimey. If it looks like I'm struggling, it's because I am. 
it is heavy. And there's some extra pieces in here as well, which I'll fish out. I couldn't see them earlier. A centre maybe, at least. You know, I'm learning a lot from this. And what I'm learning is that doing a product review on a complex product like a dividing head is no simple job. It's not like the guys who just say, well, I've got a parting tool, I'll just test it, see if it works. This is taking a bit of brain work. Uh, this dividing head, complete set, 225 pounds from Vivo Direct in the UK. So I'm just saying anything I say now is in that context, because if you've tried to buy dividing heads, as I have, old British ones, you can buy a heap of junk for 300 quid. If you want one with all the gears and everything else, you know, six, seven hundred pounds isn't out of the way. Um, you can see from them for, for this price, no chuck, handles missing. You know, that's the context. Let's not be tool snobs. So, first impressions, I like it. Now we'll go on to some things I don't like, but my first impression is I like it and I'm glad I chose it. It's just the right scale for my mill. I think if I'd gone for the six inch model, although it's you know, attractive to have a, a bigger unit, I think it would have been too big for this mill. Um, the cast body parts are really nicely made. There's a few things though that I would want to improve, but we'll go through those in a minute. Let's start with the tailstock. The tailstock's quite heavy and robust look and it's got a large base to it. It's got a nice finish on it. You can adjust the centre height here with these two. These are 16 millimetre. And then when you've adjusted this centre to where you want it, you can lock it up with this large 8 millimetre Allen key. It reminds me of the one that comes with the Spindexer, but this is far more robust. I think that's quite adequate. So let's start on this with the chuck. Now this chuck I bought for my tailstock, four jaw, same company, Sando, I would pronounce it. This chuck is a lot better. So this chuck, which was about 45, 50 pounds delivered, I think. Same size, five inch, but the jaws are a bit sloppy on it. And the key is a bit weedy. But with this one, there's no slop on these jaws. I mean, I'm trying side to side. And there's almost nothing in and out either. And this key is much larger and much heavier. So this is a much better chuck than the one I bought previously for the tailstock. So that's some measure, isn't it? Now it feels like it needs running in, but otherwise it feels really good. So I'm pleased with that chuck. Now this one is held on with four screws, this one is held on with three screws. I was rather hoping this one would go on there to give me a tailstock three jaw. Well it won't do it directly, I'd have to adapt my back plate a little bit. But that would just be a bonus for me if I could get that to work. The degree scale on this plate is very clear, nicely engraved. And this is the plate that gives you the quick index. So there's 24 holes around this plate and you engage the peg for the quick index with this lever here. So it pushes forward a pin which goes into the hole once you've got it lined up. And there's a brass indicator here which is for reading off on this scale. Now this brass indicator is potentially a bit weak but it serves its purpose and if you were really bothered you could make another indicator because it just screws on the top there. I'll show you that soon. So this lever, in common with this lever, you know, feels a little bit loose, but that pin is not loose. As that pin engages, that part of the mechanism is absolutely solid. It's just this gives you the feel of being a bit wobbly. And if I can unscrew this, which I can't now, but I can unscrew that one, look. See, this lever here feels a bit wobbly, but if it offended you, you could just Loctite it or something. They could have just made that a little bit better. And it's the same with this. It has a bit of wobble on it, but it doesn't affect its function. So that is the clamp for this, the rotation. So when you've adjusted the position of your chuck, you just tighten this up there. So I would probably do something about that because I, I think it spoils it. 
just having those a bit loose like that. The gearing on the head is 40 to 1. We'll say a bit more about that later. And that's the plug for the oil. So it's oil filled in here. And these two screws, they're for the clamps for the elevation. So once you've got it set, you just tighten those up. They're 16 millimeter. Now on the other side, you can see the big brass uh, clamping plugs there. There's one there, there's one under there that correspond to the two screws on the other side to clamp this. And these are dovetailed here. Uh, there's a scale on here and this head goes from minus 10 to plus 90. There's a block screwed onto there and I thought for a while, I, I just didn't know what it was for. But actually, what they've done is screwed that on and then they've just um, put a chisel marker in it there, which gives the zero. Now, I think they could have tried a bit harder with that. But if again, if that offends you or you don't think it's accurate enough for you, just make another because it just screws on. This handle is adequate. It's uh, made of steel. It's quite strong. Um, finish is a bit pitted there, but it's it's fine it works okay um, now this arm is alloy and so is this dividing setting spacer here and I think they would be better in something like brass this isn't maybe too bad this feels very light but it's probably adequate so again if you were, if it offended you you know you could spend a bit of your time making another now you see the springs just dropped out there Okay, so there's a, a spring that goes in to hold this and it's obviously a bit too weak. Yeah, it, it is, it is. It would need bending or replacing or something. Oh, probably bending. Yeah, that's holding that in better now. It's not a great design that bit. Um, but as you probably can see, if I loosen off that screw I can set these knives to whatever space that I want. That's probably, in my opinion, the weakest part of it. I think they could have done a bit better than that. But it does work. Okay. Right, so let's... I mean, I'm not going to check the number of degrees. I couldn't really. I can't think how I could do that. But if I just loosen this off here, and it turns smoothly enough. I just have to do it without turning this because otherwise the pin would just drop back in. So I've just loosened these off. Now it's hard to do this with any finesse, but let's try. So you can see that this is now depressed. Now oh, that one's too tight. Yeah, hold on. That's it. Oh, okay. Well, that feels pretty good, I think. So that's set to 90 here. Now you'd have to tram it, of course. And then you just nip those up. We'll just leave it at that, I think. And then rotate. Right. So I'm just going to drop this table and see if I could use this vertically on this mill. I suspect, even though it's, you know, nice and small and cute, I think it would probably still be a bit too tall to use on this mill because there's probably not enough clearance between the, the cutter and the table. But I'll just, I'll just drop it down and we'll see. You can see with the table fully down, this and this just have a bit of clearance. And with this low profile adapter holder here, I'd be able to put a cutter in there, tighten it up with the screw, and it would just probably just sit above this. So I wouldn't have wanted a dividing head that's any bigger really on this mill. I think it's just perfect size. So let's look at changing a plate. So we need to unscrew this arm. It's got a bit of free play on it there. I think 
it is an area where, you know, if I felt like it, I might improve it. Ah, it does at least go on to a shaft with a couple of flats on. So I think it's the precision or lack of precision really in that uh, piece of aluminium. You could do better than that with a piece of brass, I think. But like I said, let's not be tool snobs. It's probably adequate. But this next part is a bit weak, as in a poor design. So there's this spring clip that holds those knives on. And there's not enough spring in it. And then we've got those, which I would say the same really. They're a bit inadequate. I mean, it'll work. I might have this for several years before I do anything about that. But it could have been a bit better. And then we've got screws to take the plate off. Now behind this plate we should find the backlash adjustment. They've made everything pretty tight. But it seems alright. I can't attest to the quality of the screws, I mean they look alright. Plenty of oil on it. Hmm. Oh yeah, okay. So this is where the backlash is adjusted. There's an Allen key goes there and this plate rotates. That's how that works. I don't know what it's made of. I guess it must be steel. Yeah, it must be steel. It's just uh, got a finish on it. That's just a closer shot perhaps. So there's the Allen key. You just rotate that to adjust the backlash. These plates are not pinned, so you'd have to make sure you get these screws tight. Well, that's probably the same on all dividing heads. I'd say that's not really satisfactory like that. I might find a better way to do that. And then these dividing bits, you just turn, tighten this screw here with a washer on it. And now it's catching on the other side of the spring. So that's the weakness I think in it. Oh, now look, I think they have to try a bit harder with that bit. <coughs> Shame that it lets it down a little bit that you know given that everything else I think is pretty good or does it go this way maybe it goes that no it doesn't go that way it doesn't spring if you go that way right okay this chuck screws on with a right hand thread before I try getting it off, I've put that quick index pin in so we're not putting strain on the 40 to 1 gear. I have no idea how tight this is going to be. So I'm just going to, and it's not clamped down of course, I'm just going to try this. Okay, I'm going to try something else in a minute. That's easier way to do it. So we put this protective collar on. I don't know what the threads are. There you go. And then it takes a Morse taper to center. Now the advantage of the six inch is that that takes Morse taper three. And most of my tooling is Morse taper three. So for an ER32 collet chuck, I'm gonna to have to buy one with the Morse taper two on it. It's got a hole in the back here for extraction. I think that was 18 millimeters when I checked. It's um, a bit narrower than that, just at the, this end here. So I think it's 18 mil. Okay. Oh, and then you can see these um, quick index holes here, and that's where the pin is. 
it's very, um, what's the right word, positive. The action on it is very positive and I wondered even if the pin had a slight taper on it, but I can't really tell, to be honest. What I wanted to talk about a bit was the number of holes on these indexing plates and how you work out uh, to do your divisions. Now the easiest way is just to look on the internet because these are pretty standard plates. But actually I wanted to know if it was possible to index any holes other than the ones that were listed. It says in the literature that it indexes, I think it's 2 to 50, and then beyond 50 up to 300, not including prime numbers and some others. Well, what the heck are and some others? But it's a pretty standard design, this, so I think any that you look at with a 40 to 1 worm are likely to have this, you know, the same holes they can index and uh, the same that they can't, if you know what I mean. But let me just show you what I've worked out. You won't be able to read this, but you can see what I did to work out what uh, divisions I could get with this dividing head with the plates supplied. On here you can see integer values, maybe you can, um, but there's also non-integer values because I was looking to see if the, any of the indexing positions was very close to a whole number um, but was not listed in on the internet or anywhere. So across the top here I've put 15 circle, 16 circle and so on and then down the side the whole positions. So a 15 circle has obviously got 15 positions because there's 15 holes. So anyway in fact I didn't find any hidden kind of index positions. So I'll show you another chart in a minute with just the integers but reading across the top, this, these are the circles on the three plates. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, 27, 29, 31, 33, 37, 39, 41, 43, 47 and 49. Now some of those plates will give you um, multiple indexing values and others are there just to get the final value which I think, for example, with uh, well, 49 gives you four, an index of 49, but it also uh, gives you 490, 245, 196, going on too long. I'll show you the other sheet. So this table shows just the whole numbers, the valid positions for uh, divisions. But what I've done here is I've just taken this from the internet and I've pasted on the index positions for up to 40 divisions on this table here. And then the rest I can pick off from here. So although it says in the information sheet that it indexes up to 300, actually with a 49 plate um, you could index one hole at a time for a gear with 1960 teeth. Now I think that's unlikely isn't it? Most of what you're interested in is, is kind of in this area here. So I, I'm, what I'm saying is that although the handbook with this dividing head doesn't contain all this information, or at least I, I couldn't find it. Um, it's all readily available on the internet once you know what circles you've got on the three plates, the ones I read out across the top there. This is the part of the manual which tells you what holes there are in which of the three plates. And then it tells you as well that the spindle nose is threaded one and a half by eight TPI. Now this manual is available online from the web page for this product as a PDF. I've just about figured everything out but I wondered what these were for and I've worked it out now. They go in the base like that, screwed in, to tram it basically on the milling table. And here's the outside jaws look. Well there's three obviously. They're nicely ground. I really like that chuck you know. I think it's quite good quality. I've put a piece of ground silver steel into the chuck. Now the chuck's clamped at the moment. If I unclamp it, go around 180, see what we get. So 180, reclamp. What's that? About eight. Eight one hundredths of a millimetre. Three and a half thou, three point two thou, something like that. I don't really know what you should get on one of these, if I'm honest. I mean, on my lathe, my three jaw is anything between three and seven thou out. 
I've set up the dial test indicator on the top edge of the chuck. So I'm going to spin it round and we'll see what it does. Because I, if there is any deviation, I've got to get to the bottom of it for my project. So starting at zero. If you can just amuse yourself for 40 turns. Well, I tell you what, I'll stop halfway. That's 180 and I'll lock it. No movement. So that's just over one one hundredth of a millimetre, about half a thou, and then we'll go around to the 360 point and lock it again. 360. So that only deviated on the edge of the chuck there by one one hundredth of a millimetre as I saw it. So I'm happy with that actually. Um, you know, maybe I misclamped the chuck, but turning this lever here to lock which is probably off camera for you, isn't making any difference here. It does a bit round here for some reason, just a little look. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Now, I'll just bring you out and I'll explain something else. In the back here, if it was necessary to tighten those bearings, there's a bearing here and a bearing at the front, which you can see in the handbook, and there's a crosshead locking screw there. If you unscrew that, I believe, you could tighten that bearing a little bit. Now, I'm very reluctant to do it because I hope it's been preset in the factory. But anyway, I think that puts to bed that little concern about how much movement there was as I was rotating and locking. Um, as for the chuck run out, well, it may have been the way I clamped it. It may be because the chuck's new. I have no idea, but at least you've seen that the chuck body seems to be concentric. So I'm, I'm no longer concerned about that, actually. Well, I think that's it, the good and the bad. I think you get a lot for £225. It's a pretty solid unit. It's a shame they cheaped out on some bits, like those dividing fingers. But if it bothered you that much, you could easily make some more. I mean, the alternative is to pay probably more than that for some worn-out dividing head with a wonky chuck and whatever. Now I got that for free. I think I'd have been happy to spend the money. If you want to spend yours, click the link in the description and you get 5% off. Thanks for watching. I asked Vivo whether the discount link would work in all countries because Haxby Shed is viewed all around the world. So they've given me a list which is at least US, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Poland, Netherlands, EU, which must include some of the ones I've just mentioned, Canada, Australia, UK, and MX, which I guess has got to be Mexico. Well, this will be in a later video, but coming back to that table nut, I've just got enough room to cut those splines. The dividing head's hanging off the front of the table, but there's enough touching, it'll be okay, light cuts. It's going to be very useful. Oh, and why is it like this? Well, because my milling head doesn't tilt backwards. So the dividing head can't sit along the length of the table. It has to stick off the front like that. There's always a way to do it when you think about it for long enough.